you a chocolate Christian what's up everyone Ben Sam like here and we're talking about chocolate Christians um, what is that you know many times uh, growing up I've known a lot of people who committed to Christ even declared publicly their allegiance and when things got hot they melted and became a puddle on the ground you know I've been following Christ now for about 20 over 20 years and you know it's not easy it's difficult and if people tell you to follow Jesus you know, it's an easy life, you're going to be, you know, have all these things you want and everything, then they're lying to you. To follow Jesus is not an easy life. You're limited. There's suffering. But it's the most fulfilling life. And I've never reg never regretted, not one, not one moment regretted following Christ in the last 22 years. No regrets. Before I was following Christ, I have a lot of regrets. But once I've been following Christ, none. So, you know, how can we be a chocolate Christian? You know, growing up, I've had a lot of uh, people I know, like I said, when things got hard, they declared it. How did they fall away? Why did we fall away from the faith? How? Why are we a chocolate Christian? You know, it's like when things get hard, you know, maybe we had certain expectations. Maybe we have certain per perceptions of what it is to follow Christ, what it is to be, to have a life with Jesus. And those didn't get fulfilled or they didn't get met. So then we melt. We melt away and lose faith. So I believe, I truly believe, and according to the Bible, from what I see, if you believe in Jesus, you are saved. You're a child of God, and He will never let you go. He'll never forsake you. But you can turn your back on Christ. You can you can melt away when things get difficult. You know, when you look at Jesus, He didn't have an easy life. This is God. This is the path we must follow. You know, if He's our Master, do we think that our life is going to be any different? You know, He didn't have a, a pillow to lay His head on. He didn't have a home to go to. He was out and he was, you know, he was doing the Father's will. He was, you know, suffering and eventually even to the cross. That was his life. But that was so that he could, you know, die for our sins, resurrect and make us his children. That was part of his plan. That's part of the, you know, part of uh, his, his, per, his um, economy. So we have to understand that. Jesus is not a Santa Claus. God is not there to just give us what we want, to bless us, to make our life the way we want it. You know, that's, the, that's what a chocolate Christian expects. That's why they melt. When it doesn't happen, you know what, what we want to do is the Father's will. We're here to we he, we're here praying, God, how can I bless you, Jesus? How can you be blessed? And if that leads us to suffering, if that leads us to hardship, then we should we should if we understand that we won't melt away. We'll say this is what we got into, and we knew it. But but we have to understand in that limitation, in that suffering, then we find fulfillment. Just like a father caring for his babies, waking up at 2 in the morning to make sure they eat. You know, losing sleep. That's hard. That's difficult. But the, the joy you have. When I had my, my first baby, everybody told me like how, how good it was going to be. But I, I can never even describe to you. I never would have known if I didn't have the baby. I probably never would have missed it. But once you have that baby and you are taking care of that baby and pouring out and loving them, you have an inner joy. And I think that's for all human beings. Whether you're, you know, five years old and you share something with your brother or sister, that gives you an inner joy. When you give up, when you, you know, love, when you serve God and his, and his people, how fulfilled you feel, you know? And that is a life that's just filled with meaning and purpose. And that's a life that you can just always sense that you're right with God. And God is there pouring out and supplying He's like a king who gives the possessions and, and he gives the, the food and the things that are needed according to uh, how his kingdom is being taken care of. If you're a steward and you're taking care of God's people and taking care of his kingdom, he's going to continue to give you the blessings, the supplies you need to be one with his ministry, one with his needs. That's not a chocolate Christian. You know, a chocolate Christian, when things get hard, like when the, you know, the, 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 whatever, the music's not good, the pastor's, you know, he's not preaching what I think he should, I don't like the music, the, 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 the church building's not that nice, there's no AC, the chairs are hard, wah, that's a, that's a chocolate Christian, and they just fade and melt, because we're there for what we want. Oh, the children's service is not good for my kids, I'm going somewhere else. We need to go where God leads us, and we need to be in community, and we need to serve. We don't need, you know, they say the world's a stage. We can't say, oh, my pastor or, you know, the leading people at my church aren't letting me serve. They're not letting me grow. They're not letting me develop my talents. They're not letting me... Chocolate Christians! 
We need to get away from that, right? You got a song, take it to the streets. If you got a message, find someone who will hear it. You don't need to go to church and get, have someone give you a platform. We need to go and, and whatever Christ puts in us, we need to dispense that to somebody. We need to give it out. That's the only way that Christ will give us more. If we just keep all the riches to ourselves that God's giving us in our life, then we're just going to, you know, he's never going to give us more. And when the difficult times come, if we're there just living for ourselves, we will just melt and become a chocolate puddle on the ground. So we don't want to be chocolate Christians, brothers and sisters. We want to be here in reality, knowing we are in a battle, we are in warfare, and you're going to lose sleep, and it's going to be hard as a Christian, but we don't turn away, and we don't get weary, and we don't melt. What we do is we continue to find a supply from the Father. We continue to find His path that's best for Him and best for His kingdom, best for His people, and best for His blessing. And in that life, we will be fulfilled and we will be a people who are just really, really ready to be before the Father, really ready to meet our Father. And He will say, well done, good and faithful steward. Come into my kingdom and my rest. That's what we are attaining to. This life is a life of, of uh, struggling, striving, running, working, laboring, co-laboring with Christ, co-laboring with God, and, and going towards the prize, seeking the prize which is above, forgetting the things which are behind, stretching for, stretching, stretching to what is before. I pursue toward the goal for the prize for which God and Christ Jesus has called me outward, brothers and sisters. This is a life that we want to live, not as a chocolate Christian, not as a chocolate puddle on the ground, but as one who is, who is being one with the Father, seeking His will, living a life, whether it's you know ups and downs and struggles, before the Father, living in the index of His eye, living before Him in love, and letting Him spread out of us, letting Him shine out of us, letting Him live out of us, so when people see us, they'll see the living God living through us. When they come to the church, they'll see the living God. That's what the church is, the house, the pillar, the base, the truth. And great is the mystery of godliness, God manifested in the flesh. What is God manifesting in the flesh? That's the church. So when people want to see God, it should be in the church. Not a bunch of chocolate Christians, but a bunch of people who are living, pouring out, laboring, loving, living, dying for Christ in the church and for God and His economy. Praise the Lord. Thanks for watching.